Hey, this is Presh Talwalker. Points A and B are opposite corners of a 5x5 five five grid. Alice starts at point A and each second walks one edge right or up each direction with a 50% chance until Alice reaches point B. At the same time that Alice has started, Bob starts at point B and he moves one edge left or down, each with a 50% probability, until he reaches point A. Now I've shown these two paths one after the other, but in actuality, they happen simultaneously. Alice and Bob are randomly walking at the same time. The question is, what is the probability Alice and Bob meet during the random walks? Here, by meeting, I mean occupy the same point at the same time. What is the same probability for an n by n grid? And what is the limit as n goes to infinity? Can you figure it out? Give this problem a try, and when you're ready, keep watching the video for the solution. We'll get started by considering the possible positions that Alice and Bob can be after k steps. After one step, they're going to be pretty close to their original starting points. They're not going to be able to cross paths. The same thing goes after two steps, three steps, and four steps. But after five steps, it's possible that they could be at the same point at the same time. We can see this algebraically. When Alice is k steps from point A, Bob is also 10 minus k steps from point A. So the only points at which they could meet happen when k equals 10 minus k, which has a solution for k equals 5 steps. So the only possible points at which they could meet are 5 steps from either of their starting points. This is along the main diagonal of this grid. We now need to count the number of ways in which each of them could reach one of these meeting points. We'll start out with Alice going from point A. In the first step, Alice can either go up or right. Now if she goes up, this is the only one way that she could reach this point that's directly one step up from point A. Similarly, there's only one way that she could reach the point that's directly right from the starting point. What happens in the second step? Well, from these points, she can either go up or right again. If she had gone up in the first step, she could go up again, and that's only one way that she could be two points up from point A. Or she could have gone two points right from point A, and there's only one way that she could have gotten to this point. But imagine she had gone right first. She could go up and reach this point that's diagonal point A, or if she had gone up, she could have then gone right and reached the same point. There are two different paths to reach this point. Now what happens in the next step? We can continue this. Imagine Alice goes up or right here. Well, there's only one way she could have gotten here. Here, she could have gone to this one point and gone right, or she could have gone to the path where there are two paths and then gone up. So this will be one plus two, which equals three different ways she could have gotten to this point. Similarly, when we look at the next point, we add two and one to get three possible paths to get to this point. Here we only have one path as if she had gone right three times. So there's a pattern here. We can add up the numbers from the adjacent edges to get the number of ways to get to the new point. This is going to look very much like Pascal's triangle. Another way of looking at this is that k steps, the paths are described by the binomial expansion of the quantity u plus r to the power of k. So if we continue this, we can count the number of paths to each different point. So I'm going to start filling in the numbers and get the number of ways that Alice could get to these common meeting points. 
So now let's just focus on these numbers on the diagonal. By symmetry, the pattern is going to be exactly the same for Bob starting from point B. So we're going to end up with exactly the same number of ways that Bob could reach these meeting points. And his paths would be described by a similar binomial expansion of the quantity d plus l to the power of k, where d is down and l is left. So now we can figure out the probability. For a given common point, there are x ways for each person to get to that point. So the total number of ways that both of them could be there would be x times x, which equals x squared. Furthermore, we need to know how many different ways there are for them to meet at all. So at each step, each walker has two different choices. It could be up or right, or it could be down or left. So after five steps, each person could make two times two times two times two times two, which is equal to two to the five possible choices. So as each person can make two to the five choices, for two walkers, there will be two to the five times two to the five, which equals four to the power of five choices. So the total number of paths is four to the power of five. So we can now calculate the probability by taking the number of successes, which is the number of ways they can meet, divided by the total paths. This is going to equal 252 divided by 1024, which is approximately 24.6%. So we figured out the answer for a five by five grid. We can now generalize our logic to an n by n grid. So imagine we have an n by n grid. Alice and Bob, their only places they could possibly meet would be after exactly n steps. It's going to be the same logic where they can only meet along the main diagonal. That's the only time they could be at the same place at the same time. Furthermore, we can use the same argument about the number of ways they could have paths to reach these points. These are going to be the binomial coefficients. So now let's try and calculate the probability. We again have that for each of these points, there are x ways for each person to get to that point. Thus there are a total of x squared ways for both of them to get to that point. So the number of ways that they could meet is going to be the sum of the squared binomial coefficients. Furthermore, at each step, each person has two choices. So after n steps, each person has two to the n possible choices. So for two walkers, there would then be two to the n times two to the n, which equals four to the n choices. So before I get to calculating the probability of dividing this by the total, the ways they can meet divided by the total paths, I'm going to simplify the number of ways they can meet. So we have this formula where we have the sum of the squared binomial coefficients. I'm going to write this in a different way. Instead of writing it as square terms, I'm going to take one of the terms in the square and I'm going to write it as the other equivalent binomial coefficient. This is using the property that n choose j is equal to n choose n minus j. This follows directly from the definition. Now, how can we evaluate this summation? Well, let's imagine a problem. If you have n women and n men, how many different ways are there to make a group of n people? I claim this sum exactly counts the number of ways. The first term would be say that you choose a group with zero women and n men. So that's n choose zero times n choose n. Then you need to add it to choosing one woman and n minus one men. And then you keep adding it where you have k women and n minus k men until you add up all the different ways that you could have a certain number of women and a certain number of men in the group. So this summation counts the number of ways that we can choose a group of n people when we have n women and n men. But there's another way that we could evaluate and solve this problem. 
we could also count by thinking that there are two n people total in this group. We want to make a subgroup of n people. Therefore, there will be two n choose n ways to make a group of n people. So we counted the answer in two different ways, and therefore the number of ways is also equal to 2n choose n. So now we can calculate the probability based on the total number of paths, which is 4 to the n. We take 2n choose n divided by 4 to the power of n. But there's another simplification we can make. 2n choose n is known as the central binomial coefficient. This is because it's the center term of an expansion. It has an asymptotic form of 4 to the power of n divided by the square root of pi times n. This can be shown using Stirling formula or also by considering some other asymptotic forms. I've provided a link where you can see that. Now, if we use this in the probability that they meet, we look at the asymptotic probability and the four over n's cancel out. So we actually get the probability they meet is going to approach one divided by the square root of pi times n. And this is absolutely amazing that pi comes into this probability question. This leads to an unusual way that we could approximate pi. We could simulate two random walkers on a large n by n grid. We could then estimate the probability that they meet and get an answer x. The estimate of pi will then be 1 divided by the quantity x squared times n. This is a very slowly converging and bad approximation, but it's interesting to see that pi appears in this problem. Did you figure this out? Thanks for watching this video. Please subscribe to my channel. I make videos on math and game theory. You can catch me on my blog, Mind Your Decisions, which you can follow on Facebook, Google Plus, and Patreon. You can catch me on social media at Press Talwalker. And if you liked the video, please check out my books. There are links in the video description.